guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, Sophie Mounds, we're to the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Chord Progressions. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Maybe he's right. I just need to be more receptive to critique. I shouldn't be so sensitive. Wait, fuck, am I being too hard on myself here? Should I be standing up for myself more? Oh, man, I honestly can't tell. This is the problem with retail. I've been berated by customers so often it begins to wear at my psyche and tear away my sense of self-worth. When I have to take their abuse and not be allowed to stand up for myself, it conditions me to believe the things they say. And now I'm in a situation where I'm constantly second-guessing myself. Maybe I should go talk with April about this. I'd rather not stay here and watch this guy play while I mull over my trauma. Besides, I don't really need to babysit him while he plays. I'm sure he's not going to break the thing. Without a word, I turn tail and return to the counter. Did you hear what he said to me? Not really. Was he being stuck up or something? Yeah, a little. He made a comment that the C-flat key was sharp or whatever, and I didn't really understand what he meant. And then he criticized me for working this job in the first place since I don't know what he was talking about. Wow, kind of rude. Right? He does have a decent point, though. You should really have some basic understanding of music. It's only going to help you. You're not wrong, but come on, it's my second day. I know, I know. Don't beat yourself up over it. Too late for that. April and I continued regular affairs as Trent continued to play beautiful melodies. It was background noise. It was great background noise. Something about classical music just seems to clear my mind and put me in a productive mood. He might be a jerk, but the boy is certainly talented. His playing eventually ceases and he approaches the counter where April and I were standing. How was everything? Will, the, will that piano work for you? Uh, yes, mostly. Um, do you know anything about music? April lets out a small chuckle. Yes, I certainly do. I'd like my friend who's been working here for two days. I've been working here for two years. I'm a damn fool. I willingly gave the hyena ammunition to throw even more shade at me. Okay, good. It, it all sounded great, but the C, C sharp 4 was flat. Cool, I'll make a note of that. Chester can tune it before Saturday. Great. I guess I'll see you two then. April gave him a thumbs up. You sure will. Anything else? No, that was everything. Thank you. I gave him a half-hearted wave without saying anything. April waved as well. Take care. Good luck on Saturday. Uh, thank you. You too. Trent had a split-second look of embarrassment, then walked briskly to the door and exited the store. Wait, how do you know I was performing too? I don't think he did. He accidentally you too would you. Work continued as expected until Chester made an appearance. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I'll make sure I count your extra times as overtime, April. No worries. Am I good to go? Yep. Eddie and I will take it from here. Fire. Catch you both later. She briskly took her leave. Did Trent come by? Yeah, he did. He's all signed up for the show on Saturday. Great. So, what'd you think of him? Um, well, he's a great player, but honestly, he was a bit rude to me. Rude how? Well, he was playing the baby grand, then he made a comment about a key not being flat or something. I didn't really understand it. So I asked for him to elaborate, then he came back with, Well, why'd you choose to work at a music store if you don't know anything about music? I did a little impersonation of him when giving my paraphrase. I may have exaggerated his tone. Did he actually say it that way? Well, it was a little more deadpan. Oh, I see. Well, Trent is just, uh, kind of like that. I don't think he was trying to antagonize you. He was just making an observation about something that didn't make very much sense to him. In the short time I've known him, I've noticed he's not the most tactful. Well, either way, it felt rude. Like, I've dealt with plenty of rude customers, and he comes nowhere near comes nowhere near close to being the worst, but still. I get it, but I think you two may have gotten off on the wrong foot. I think you'd like him if you gave him a chance. Why, is he going to be coming by here a lot or something? Not necessarily. I just think if you two get to know, got to know each other, you'd be fast friends. What's Chester's angle here? Why is he trying to initiate a friendship between me and the deer? I shoot him a perplexed look. Chester lets out a sigh. Look, I don't want you two to do anything you don't want to do. I just want to try to kill two birds with one stone. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're new in town, so obviously it wouldn't be a bad idea to introduce you to some locals, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, Trent has a bit of a complicated family life. To make a long story short, he lived in Douglas all his life, but hasn't made, a f hasn't made very many friends. Over the past few months, I've gotten to know Trent and some of his family. And some of his family. We all work out at the same gym. From what I learned, they have a very ins insular lifestyle. Uh, Trent told me that he and all his cousins were homeschooled. He graduated from Douglas Scott, but didn't make any connections while there. 
Okay then, so what? He lacked social skills because of a weird upbringing? I think that's part of it, yeah, but he's a nice kid. I know he has a kind heart, and I really want to do what I can to help him, help him branch out. Now that I have a little more perspective on the situation, I can maybe forgive him. His family must be super religious or something. I can certainly relate to that lived experience. Is it bad that I'm the main reason I'm the main reason I'm considering Trent's pro Chester's proposal is because Trent's so handsome? I'm giving him pretty people privilege. Even so, everyone deserves a second chance, right? All right, I'll give him another chance. Chester's face lights up with a mixture of elation and relief. Great. So, how about a rendezvous with us three at the gym then? Excuse me, at the gym? Like a gym gym, like exhausting workouts, sweaty men lifting big heavy things, and everybody judging me for being a weakling kind of gym? No, 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 absolutely not. That will send my anxiety into a tizzy. There's no way. Um, I don't know. I start rubbing my arm. I really can't contain the nerves. Hey, no need to be anxious about it. The gym is practically empty on weekday afternoons. The weight room and locker room hardly have anyone in there. Wait, locker room? There may be more to consider. Okay, let's treat this like a devil and angel on my shoulders type situation. The angel says, go to the gym. You can make a friend with someone who really may really need it. Plus, you've been meaning to get in better shape, right? The devil says, go to the gym. You can peep at Chester and Trent in the change room. Well, then the decision is unanimous. I have to freaking do this. Um, well, when you put it that way, sure, I'll go. Excellent. I almost always catch him there on Wednesdays. This is going to be good for me. Going out of my comfort zone is one of the ways I can work on handling my anxiety. I can't let it keep ruling my life. I want to work on my body. I want to be healthier. And goddammit, I want to see those two in their underwear. You and I could be on the same workout schedule and leave tomorrow after lunch rush. Are you sure you don't need me here? Positive. In the past, I've left those three there here by themselves. They hold down the fort just fine. He offers me a reassuring smile. For non-horny reasons, I am glad I get to spend a little time with Chester outside of work. For horny reasons, I am glad I get to spend time with Chester out in the locker room. Oh, you sneaky devil. Closing went without a hitch. A few folks came into the store here and there. After a nice Jaguar gal bought herself a new base, we decided to call it a night. Gosh, that's a beautiful shot. Chester is driving me home again. I guess this is something I'll need to get used to if I'm going to claim all this overtime. It means spending more time with the wolf. This is a great time for me to make sure I cover all the bases with him regarding our gym trip. I find that I can handle my anxiety much better if I can prepare for a tense situation. So, uh, I don't think I've ever been to a gym outside of school before. What sort of stuff do I need to bring? Well, since you have a shift to finish after we get back, I would like for you to bring a full change of workout clothes and some shower supplies. A shower? Fuck, what kind of showers does this gym have? Is it like gang showers and no curtains? I'm not sure if I'll be able to handle that. So, um, what kind of a uh, shower situation? There's stalls with curtains, Eddie, don't worry. Thank God I didn't have to entirely verbalize that question. I know it can be tough for guys like us when it comes to public shower stuff. Private stalls definitely work best. Gang showers can certainly be awkward. You don't want to give anyone the wrong idea. Plus, I don't do free shows. He turns to me and gives me a wink and a cheeky grin. Okay, at least he's acknowledging the dragon in the room here. <laughs> like, he must, be, he must know I'm attracted to him, right? He's perfect. How could I not? So, what kind of workouts will we be doing? Trent's usually in the weight room on Wednesdays, so we'll do a little bit of strength training. Great. You two can see how much of a weakling I am. Love that for me. Well, at least I'll learn something new. Do I need to pay anything to get in? Nah, you'll be on my guest pass. I pay for a premium membership, so I have unlimited passes. I got it so I could offer it to Dave, but it's hard for him to get motivated to exercise. The dynamic of those two is so interesting to me. He and Dave are polar opposite when it, how polar opposites when it comes to body types and fitness goals. Oh, that works out well, thanks. Nah, thank you. I hardly use that pass. I'm glad it'll get some use. There was a slight pause in the conversation. Oh, also, don't worry about the other three tomorrow. I texted Pat, April, and Dave to let them know what the deal is. I had to make a deal with Pat to have him at least 2.30 sharp, though, whatever that means. So we'll cut out around 1, and I need to be back by 2.30 so we don't strand April and Dave. All right, I can deal with that. We arrived at the, to the apartment's parking lot. I unfastened my seatbelt. Thanks again for helping close tonight. The extra set of paws helps tremendously. Of course, I enjoy the OT. Hey, there's always opportunity for OT while we're short, so short-staffed. I'll see you tomorrow then, right? Right and early, sir. Good man. Sleep tight, bud. I shut the car door and mosey my way to the building's front door and up the stairs. Ooh. Excuse me, Chester drives off into the night. 
I walk in on a similar sight to yesterday. April and Mariah are both cuddled on the couch watching the same crime drama. This time there's some white wine on the coffee table. Hey you! Hey you! She sits up and circles around the couch to meet me at the front door for a big hug. One of the many things I love about Mariah is how sincere and tender her hugs are. Her emotions become completely tangible. At this range, I can smell some of the alcohol on her breath. She's certainly not wasted, but perhaps a bit tipsy. Hey, how was your orientation? It was great! Come on, come sit! Let me tell you about it! April, can you pause it? But where's the good part? It can wait. I want to tell Eddie all about orientation. Mariah and I took a seat. April pauses the program. So, Douglas Scott University is so much bigger in person. At least it's not the... What is it? My, at least it's not the Michael Scott University. I got to tour the whole campus and we ended up at the extracurricular fair. I saw lots of cute clubs to join. That's awesome. Any clubs, any clubs catch your eye? Well, there's a photography club. Definitely joining that. There's also a club dedicated to making sculptures out of recycled materials. Lots of neat stuff I can sink my teeth into to complement my BFA. Sounds right up your alley. For sure, I'm so excited. Ugh, then we had to sit through some after-school special shit or whatever. You know, some boring lecture about the campus rules and how to stay safe and all that. Aw, oh, did Healthy Harold the drug-fighting giraffe come on stage and tell you not to freebase heroin? April allowed a chuckle at my silly joke. It was a little bit more chill than that, but yeah, the whole drug and alcohol spiel was given. I could just kind of zoned out. It's not really for me. I'm not some dumbass 18-year-old trying to get drunk at a frat house. Yeah, now you're a dumbass 25-year-old trying to get drunk with your girlfriend on a Tuesday. I gesture to the wine. Hush, it's celebratory. She turns to grab the bottle and one of the three wine glasses on the table. She takes the only empty glass and pours it halfway and passes it to me. The new beginnings. She picks up her own glass and clinks it against mine. We both take a sip. It's quite lovely. Fruity, refreshing, sweet, but not too sweet. Notes of vanilla, perhaps? Ooh, tasty. Good selection, Mo. Actually, April picked it out. What? You mean April picked out a sweet, fruity wine instead of a cheap bottle of scotch? Color me surprised. I use the most smart-ass, smart sarcastic tone I can muster. I'll color your, I'll color your face black and blue if another smart comment comes out of your mouth. April was very clearly not making a genuine threat. Despite this, Mariah's expression was a mixture of shock and amusement. She turned around and gave April a light smack on the arm. Honey, no! Don't you dare hurt him! She's giving April some playful attitude. But you can hit me, though. Yes. How's that fair? Because, I, because I'm a girl. And I'm not a girl. Nope. Again, the playful attitude. Okay then, genius. What's my gender? Menace. My gender is a menace. Yes. Fine, I'll show you a menace. April, without warning, launches a brutal tickle assault on Mariah. The fox lets out an initial yelp. Ah, no, 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 I'm still holding the wine, stop, ah! She can hardly get the words out while giggling so violently. I'm a menace, remember? Menaces don't care about your stupid wine. It's your stupid wine and your stupid couch I'm gonna spill it on. April snatches the glass out of Mariah's paw and places it on the table. Ahina continues her assault. I finish up the wine I have left in the glass, and I'll let them have their moment. I'm gonna bed. Please don't break anything, you weirdos. Good night, Eddie. She's barely able to muster out the words from the uncontrollable laughter. See you tomorrow, weirdo. Cute. Sanctuary! I strip off my clothes and flop face first on my bed. My soft, warm, squishy bed. I roll over on my back and give my phone a quick glance. No messages or any other notifications. I plug in my phone and rush to the top of my nightstand to let it charge. I should think about getting into the shower. I have to do all this have to do this all over again tomorrow. But the bed, it's so soft, it's so warm. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Terezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye